Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Bienvenidos. Thanks for coming to mark this day of solidarity with the Cuban people. This is a day of pride as we honor the culture and history of a noble nation. It's a day of sorrow as we reflect on the continued oppression of the Cuban people. Most of all, this is a day of hope. We have hope because we see a day coming when Cubans will have the freedom of which they have dreamed for centuries. The freedom that is the eternal birthright of all mankind. And many of you here are working to hasten that day. And I thank you for your efforts. I particularly thank the members of my cabinet who've joined us. Madam Secretary, thank you for coming and being a staunch friend of the Cuban people. Mi amigo Carlos Gutierrez. Y su familia. For those of you in Cuba who are listening to this broadcast, I think it is important for you to know that Carlos is a Cuban American. He's now in the cabinet of the President of the United States. All things are possible in a free society. Secretary Kempthorne, Secretary Chow, and Secretary Levitt, thank you all for coming as well. I appreciate Acting Secretary Bernardi of the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Particularly thankful for members of the United States Congress, Mel Martinez, all things are possible in a free society. Ileana Roslathian. Los Hermanos Ballart. Lincoln Diaz Ballardi, también Mario Diaz Ballart. Thank you for coming. Con Congressman Chris Smith. Congressman. Congressman Darrell Issa. <laughs> Congressman John Campbell. <laughs> Congressman Gus Bilarakis. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate, you all coming. Appreciate the members of the Diplomatic Corps who've joined us. Thank you for being such good friends of the Cuban people. I want to thank family members of the Cuban dissidents who are here. Welcome to the White House. Thank you for coming. Y por fin, Willie Chirino and his wife, Lisette Alvarez. Thank you all for coming. This time of year holds great significance for the Cuban people. 113 years ago this week, Cuba lost its great poet and patriot, Jose Marti. And 106 years ago this week, Cuba achieved the independence for which Marti gave his life. Jose Marti knew that true liberty would come to Cuba only with a just government of its people's choosing. He warned a regime of personal despotism would even be more shameful and more calamitous than the political despotism Cuba now endures. Marti's warning proved truer than anyone could have imagined. Today, after nearly a 
half century of repression. Cuba still suffers under the personal despotism of Fidel and Raul Castro. On the dictators watch Cuba's political freedoms have been denied. Families have been torn apart. The island's economy has been reduced to shambles. Cuba's culture has been drained of artists and scholars and musicians and athletes. And like the once grand buildings of Havana, Cuba's society is crumbling after decades of neglect under the Castros. A few months ago, when Fidel handed over many of his titles to his brother Raul, the Cuban regime announced a series of so-called reforms. For example, Cubans are now allowed to purchase mobile phones and DVD players and computers. And they've been told that they will be able to purchase toasters and other basic appliances in 2010. If the Cuban regime is serious about improving life for the Cuban people, it will take steps uh, necessary to make these changes meaningful. Now, if the Cuban people can be trusted with mobile phones, they should be trusted to speak freely in public. Now that the Cuban people are allowed to purchase DVD players, they should also be allowed to watch movies and documentaries produced by Cuban artists who are free to express themselves. Now that the Cuban people have open access to computers, they should also have open access to the Internet. Now that the Cuban people will be allowed to have toasters in two years, they should stop needing to worry about whether they will have bread today. There is another problem with the regime's recent announcements. It is the height of hypocrisy to claim credit for permitting Cubans to own products that virtually none of them can afford. For the regime's actions to have any impact, they must be accompanied by major economic reforms that open up Cubans' inefficient state-run markets to give families real choices about what they buy, and institute a free enterprise system that allows ordinary people to benefit from their talents and their hard work. Only when Cubans have an economy that makes prosperity possible with these announcements lead to any real improvements in their daily lives. Real change in Cuba also requires <laughs> political freedom. In this area, too, the regime has made grand commitments. One of Raul's first acts after receiving his new titles was to sign a major United Nations treaty on human rights. Yet when it comes to respecting human rights on the island. The regime has not attempted even cosmetic changes. For example, political dissidents continue to be harassed, detained, and beaten, and more than 200 prisoners of conscience still languish in Castro's tropical gulag. Recently, I received a letter from a man who spent 17 years in these dungeons. He described them as dens of torture and pain and death. This is an undeniable violation of the UN treaty that Cuba just signed. The regime views this document as anything more than a worthless piece of paper. It must immediately stop its abuse of political dissidents and release all political prisoners. is watching the Cuban regime. If it follows its recent public gestures by opening up access to information and implementing meaningful economic reforms, respecting political freedom and human rights, 
then it can credibly say it has delivered the beginnings of change. But experience tells us this regime has no intention of taking these steps. Instead, its recent gestures appear to be nothing more than a cruel joke perpetuated on a long-suffering people. America refuses to be deceived, and so do the Cuban people. While the regime embarrasses and isolates itself, the Cuban people will continue to act with dignity and honor and courage. And Cuba Advocates of Liberty used this week to honor political prisoners who have sacrificed for the cause of freedom, like the brave writer named Pedro Luis Boitel. On May 17, 1972, while on a hunger strike in prison, Boitel said, They can kill and destroy my body, but never my spirit. This can never bend. Eight days later, Boitel died. He was 41 years old. We see the same unbending courage in Cuba's political prisoners today. We see it in a man named Luis Enrique Ferrer Garcia. Luis Enrique is a peaceful pro-democracy advocate who was rounded up during the 2003 Black Spring. Luis Enrique received the longest sentence of all those arrested during the crackdown, condemned to 28 years in Castro's prisons. At times, this brave man has been trapped in a dark cell too small for him to stand. He suffers from high blood pressure and severe gastrointestinal illnesses. As his health obviously deteriorates, he has little access to his family. We see this courage in a doctor named Oscar Elias Bisset. Dr. Bisset is a healer, a man of peace, and a determined activist for human rights. For all this, Dr. Bisset serves a 25-year sentence under the worst conditions. He was once put in a solitary confinement for nearly eight months trapped in a small, dark underground cell. He lost nearly 50 pounds and has lost almost all his teeth. He's in poor health. He has allowed very few visitors. We see this courage in Cuba's Damas de Blanca. Every Sunday, these ladies in white march in silent, peaceful protest, demanding the release of their loved ones. A few weeks ago, when about a dozen of these women held a peaceful sit-in in a public park. They were dragged from the area by a large pro-regime mob. One of the women was Berta Solar, Soler, whose husband, Juan Angel Moya Acosta, is serving a 20-year sentence. Earlier this month, Berta told me personally, despite the torture, Cuba's political prisoners will not give in. Recently, a former political prisoner asked me to remember his brothers languishing in Castro's jails. Through this day of solidarity with the Cuban people, we honor that request by speaking the names of Cuba's prisoners of conscience. They include men I've just mentioned. They include others, such as Ricardo Gonzalez Alfonso, Jose Luis Garcia Paneque, Normando Hernandez, Jorge Luis Gonzalez Tanquero, and Ariel Iguidos Sigler Amaya. They include other names that many of you keep in your hearts and in your prayers. These names are being whispered in Cuban cities from Pinar del Rio to Santiago de Cuba. These names are being echoed at solidarity events across the world as people from South America to Eastern Europe demand the release of all Cuban prisoners, political prisoners. Today, these names are being recognized by the nation that will always be a friend of Cuban freedom, Los Estados Unidos. This is the first day 
of solidarity with the Cuban people. And the United States must keep observing such days until Cuba's freedom. We will continue to support the Cubans who work to make their nation democratic and prosperous and just. Since 2001, the United States has dramatically stepped up our efforts to promote freedom and democracy in Cuba. This includes our increased efforts to get uncensored information to the Cuban people, primarily through Radio and TV Martí. Today, I also repeat my offer to license U.S. NGOs and faith-based groups to provide computers and Internet to the Cuban people if Cuban rulers will end their restrictions on Internet access. And since Raul is allowing Cubans to own mobile phones for the first time, we're going to change our regulations to allow Americans to send mobile phones to family members in Cuba. If Raul is serious about his so-called reforms, he will allow these phones to reach the Cuban people. Through these measures, the United States is reaching out to the Cuban people. Yet we know that life will not fundamentally change for Cubans until their form of government changes. For those who have suffered for decades, such change may seem impossible. But the truth is, it is inevitable. The day will come when Cubans freely receive information from many sources. The day will come when popular blogs are no longer blocked and broadcasts from the United States are no longer jammed. The day will come when Cuban leaders live up to the international human rights documents they have signed instead of making a mockery of them. The day will come when Cubans can speak their dissent and change their jobs and leave their country and return to it. And the day will come when they can worship the God Almighty without fear. The day will come when all political prisoners are offered unconditional release. And these developments will bring another great day, the day when Cubans choose their own leaders by voting in free and fair elections. Today, 113 years after Jose Marti left us, a new post-patriot expresses the hopes of the Cuban people. With this this morning is songwriter Willie Chirino. Willie will perform a song that is on the Cuban people's lips and in their hearts. And here are some of the lyrics. Nuestro día ya viene llegando. As I mentioned today, my words are being broadcast directly to the Cuban people. I say to all those listening on the island today, your day is coming. As surely as the waves beat against the Malecon, the tide of freedom will reach Cuba's shores. Until it does, know that you're in our prayers. And know that the author of liberty hears those prayers. Y que con su ayuda, venemos a Cuba libre. Gracias, y que Dios los bendiga. Thank you, Mr. President, for being a friend of the Cuban people throughout your uh, administration. Thank you very much.
I like to dedicate this song to this the, the direct victims of the Cuban regime who happen to be here tonight. Nuestro día ya viene llegando. Apenas siendo niño allá en la antigua, mi padre me vistió de marinero. Tuve que navegar noventa millas y comenzar mi vida de extranjero, huyéndole a la hoz y al ver lo mío. Corriendo de esa absurda ideología Pues nunca quise ser aperitivo Del odio, del rencor y la apatía En la maleta traje un colibrí Un libro de un martí Un sueño y un danzón Vino a venir moré Polizón, junto a los matamoros y a Tuní me traje una palmera y un bohío y hasta Pinar del Río lo relocalicé en mi humilde lugar el diablo por la doce avenida del San Juan Ahí empezó la dura realidad Ay Dios De todo el que se tira la maroma De sobrevivir fuera de su idioma De sus costumbres y su identidad pasó lo que tenía que pasar oh, de mi nueva ciudad tomé su abrigo pues la resignación es fiel amigo del hombre cuando tiene que emigrar y pensé a la distancia y al ataque del rígido alma, yo vivo con la suerte de sentirme cubano hasta la muerte, de ser amante de la libertad. Hoy que mi pueblo vive ilusionado, yo me siento inspirado y un son estoy cantando. Anunciándole a todos mis hermanos Que nuestro día ya viene llegando oh, oh, oh. Ya viene llegando oh, oh, oh. Ya viene llegando Ya todo el mundo lo está esperando Ya viene llegando Ay, Cuba hermosa y primorosa Ya viene llegando que somos un solo pueblo que va cantando ya viene llegando quiero ver volar mi bandera Cuba no ya se viene espera llegando. Corazón. Ya viene llegando Con la glorieta del parque de consolación Ya viene llegando Cada día yo te quiero más Mi Cuba bella te quiero más Ya viene más. llegando 
de San Antonio a Maicí, por Maceo y por Martín. Polonia, libre. Hungría, libre. Checoslovaquia, libre. Rumanía, libre. Alemania Oriental, libre. Rusia, libre. Cuba. What a tremendous honor it is to sing this song for you to, for you today. It is unbelievable. Should I do another song? No. You won't. I was afraid to ask. <laughs> Thank you. This is, this is a, a song that uh, actually reflects exactly what uh, we're here for tonight. It means palante. It's a song of courage, of, of determination, of uh, wanting to go on and that's what us Cuban and hoping for and we're getting it. Palante. Cuando resulta todo difícil cuando la esperanza se va, cuando se vuelve noche tu vida, se nubla todo y parece que el sol no quiere alumbrar. Dale una vuelta y mira distinto, y piensa que todo puede cambiar. Toda la fuerza que te hace falta, la tienes dentro del alma, y allí la vas a encontrar. Palante, palante. Camina, no te detengas jamás Palante, palante Con fuerza todo se puede lograr Levanta bien la cabeza Y mira alegría al futuro Porque algo bueno vendrá Palante, palante Camina, no te detengas jamás Palante, palante Con fuerza que así se hará realidad El sueño que andas buscando Esa promesa de vida Amor y felicidad de los que siembran el odio basta de los que empujan para atrás hay tanta gente buena en el mundo que bastaría un segundo para borrar todo el mal por eso la esperanza no muere por eso no se acaba la fe queda, queda. porque cuando el amor es profundo es permanente y fecundo y no hay quien pueda correr Palante, palante Camina, no te detengas por nada Palante, palante Con fuerza todo se puede lograr Levanta bien la cabeza y mira de al futuro porque algo bueno vendrá Palante, palante Camina, no te detengas por nada Palante, palante Con fuerza que así se hará realidad El sueño que andas Buscando esa promesa de vida, amor y felicidad. Y el que no baile porque no le da la gana. Oh. A mí no me pasa, yo voy para adelante. Ahora embúllate y ven conmigo, ven para acá, que hay un mundo por delante. A mí no me pasa, que yo voy para adelante. Porque si puedo contar con tu apoyo. Con eso tengo bastante yeah. He 
está guagua no va para atrás, sube la mirada y mostrate conmigo, que va, para lo que te digo, que va, que va, para que va, que va, para adelante la mano, que va, que va, para no va, cuando un pueblo quiere su libertad, para atrás, para atrás no va. Thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you another great singer who happens to be my wife. She's Lisette and she's going to lead us to the Cuban National Anthem. Buenos días, canten conmigo todos. Nacional de Cuba. Corred, vaya meses que la patria os contempla orgullosa. No temáis una muerte gloriosa que morir por la patria es vivir. En cadenas vivir es vivir. En ofrendas y oprobio sumido del clarín, escuchad el sonido a las armas valientes correr. ¡Viva Cuba Libre! ¡Viva Cuba Libre! 